Hey guys, so I am going over the instructions for the bloomers for my layout pattern. It um, has come to my attention that I have not done that and it just, it just completely slipped my mind. I also didn't do the slip and that's in another video. So I'm catching up on myself, better late than never, and I appreciate y'all for um, your understanding of my hot mess of a self. So with the bloomers, what you're going to do is you're going to cut out two of these. Um, why does it say cut one on the fold? I should not say cut one on the fold. Oh, bother. Okay, you're going to cut out two of these. One day I'm not going to be such a hot mess, and I, and I just apologize. I'm kind of rethinking a bunch of stuff with all of this because I'm realizing how much of a hot mess I really am. So, um, to do the bloomers, what you're going to do is you're going to sew the front of the bloomers together and you're going to sew the back of the bloomers. You can see I've got marked front of bloomers and I've got marked back of bloomers. So you're going to take this and you can, it's up to you whether you use a French seam or a plain seam. That is completely up to you. You could serge it together if you wanted to. I, if I was doing, this is just some material that I use when I'm testing fabrics, uh, testing patterns out. But if I was using fabric, I would do a French seam. And yes, the French seam does work around the curve. I've done it many a times and it works just fine. But in this case, I'm just kind of going to go through, through the motions to show y'all the process. And I'm just going to do a plain seam. So there's that. And then you're going to do the other side. Same thing. Alright, so from there, um, you can finish out these little leg holes. So whatever treatments you want to do on the leg holes, you're going to do them now before you join the crotch together. So uh, you can see there's an elastic placement line. Um, you're going to do that. There's other ways to do bloomers besides the elastic thing, so if you know what I'm talking about, you're welcome to take this and run with it. Um, if you're just starting out, let's just stick with this route, with this method right here. So what you'll do is you'll take your elastic. So what you're going to do is you're going to start, I have my needle in, so it's, it's keeping the elastic there, you can see it's not going anywhere. I got my needle in and my machine is set to a straight stitch. And I'm just going to do a couple of stitches and back tack. Then I'm going to switch to a zigzag. And I'm going to use the hand crank, make sure this is a little bit wider, to make sure that I'm wide enough to go from one side of the zigzag to the other side, okay? Um, once that is verified, I'm going to pull on this piece of elastic, one side of the elastic to the other side of the elastic. So once I verify that the zigzag is wide enough, then I'm going to pull on it a little bit, and I'm going to be careful not to catch the elastic in these zigzag stitches. And I'm just going to go over. Now that I'm at the end, I'm going to go back to a straight stitch, and this is going to be used to back tag it. So, if you wanted to do, um, if you wanted to do finish the hem up with a, a lace edging, that would be pretty. You could also, I've left a half an inch of seam allowance here, so you could also fold it over once and fold it over twice and just straight stitch along there. I'll kind of actually do this step before you do the elastic step. Um, so then it's just flat like this and easier to do. So, so let me backtrack a little bit. So to do the hem, you could fold it over, you know, once and then twice and top stitch along there to do the hem. You could also attach lace onto it. There's a couple other things you could do. Farmhouse has these um, bias strips where, let me see if I have any laying around here. Here we go. Farmhouse sells these, um, these, they're like bias bands and they open up like this. One side is just a hair longer, like a sixteenth of an inch 
um, wider than the other side with the idea that you sew the shorter side, the shorter width facing up, and that way you're guaranteed to catch the bottom in your stitches. And so what you could do is you could just like put this on top of that um, to enclose the raw edge. But yeah, I would do the hem first and do the and then do the elastic step like what we just talked about. Then um, what you can do is you can join this crotch seam right here. I would actually do it wrong sides together when I normally when I do a, a well when I do a, a, a bloomers with fabric <laughs> I do a French seam so I would do it actually wrong sides together trim up the French seam and then flip it around and finish up my French seam and so at that point let me just sew these together just so it's like whatever Okay, so you can kind of imagine that that would be a French seam, and that um, the other side would be done as well, and it would be cinched in like this. Now, so something to talk about here, I've, some people don't like doing this zigzag thing for babies, and that's fine. Um, I've done it a number of times. I've never noticed when elastic, like when bare elastic touches a baby's skin, I've never noticed any irritation, but just a little, um, just a little note there, it doesn't bother, I haven't found it bothers my babies, but like I said, other people don't do that, and that's fine. What they do instead is they would put a casing, so they would put like a strip of fabric, turn down, turn the raw edges of that strip of fabric under, and then top stitch and create a casing, and then put the elastic through the casing. To each their own, it's sewing, you do you. So, we're going to pretend that the other side is done, and then from there, what you would do is... Um, if you can imagine those are French seams, this would be the inside of our garment. Are there plain seams if you decided to do plain seams? That's fine. Here's the front of our garment. Um, what you will do from here is turn this under once, and then I like, I left a half inch. If you go to three quarters, it's fine. It's very forgiving measurements. So I would turn this all under a quarter of an inch all the way around. I would iron it down so it's a quarter of an inch and it's turned to the wrong side of the garment. Then I would do a second pass and I would turn it under either a quarter of an inch um, or I would do like three eighths of an inch, something around there. And then I would do that all the way around. So at that point you have this finished folded edge that's been ironed all the way around this whole thing, okay? And then I would start at the back of the garment, and I'd probably start some random area over here. And you would sew all the way around and come back leaving a hole, leaving a little gap here, okay? And you're leaving a gap here because you're going to thread a piece of elastic all the way through. So I'll, I will take a safety pin, I've shown this so many times on my channel and other projects, I would take a safety pin, thread it, uh, feed it through that casing that we've just created, and making sure that you tack down the end of that elastic so it doesn't keep going through the casing. That's not quite productive, right? You go around in circles. So, um, so you tack that down, keep on going. You can you could pin it in place. Is what I usually pin it in place. Keep it going on the outside, and then sew the ends of the elastic together. You're going to sew about a quarter of an inch away from the raw edges of that elastic so your seams don't, so your stitches don't pull through the elastic after some wear. You know, if, it, if the elastic gets tugged on, you don't want those stitches to pull through. So, do that, and at that point you'll have this little hole, and you can just top stitch over that, and your bloomers are done. One little side thing um, to be uh, in that step that you may want to do, I do it quite a bit, is I put a little loop of ribbon. If you can imagine that this piece of elastic, oh, here we go. Here's like a, just a random cutoff of some French lace. Why not? So this is a pretty piece of elastic, of a ribbon, which you can do, as I like to put like a little loop like this, and then I will include that 
into this step. So this has been, the rod has been folded down and then folded again. And then I'll just put this little piece of ribbon over here and I will include that, on, I will attach that to the back side of the bloomers. That way it's kind of like a little like tag, if you will, like a clothing tag or always on the back side of clothing, or at least quite often they're on the back side of clothing. It's kind of like that, so it's like an easy way to tell the front from the back or the back from the front. Oh my God, I'm a hot mess. I so appreciate your understanding with this. Um, I apologize again that I forgot to include this with the initial release of the pattern. I'm just a hot mess. I have been trying to scale back for the last month or so because I realize, I recognize that I am tired and I'm doing too much and I don't want to put out anything besides the best quality that I can do. So appreciate your understanding. That's how you do those two things. Uh, if you have missed the slip, the slip is a video. It's over here. Go check it out. If you have any questions on either one, of course, uh, put them down in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them. And as always, I appreciate you guys for watching and I hope to catch y'all next time.